Hello everyone, and let's talk about Star Wars Battlefront. I just heard the news that the beta has been extended by a few days. I was going to do this today and say, all right, end of beta. Uh, we're, let's talk about is it worth getting or not, and then I read the beta has been extended. But we're still going to go through this video because, you know, we're going to got a good first impression of it. Played it on all three platforms, played all three modes that were available. We had one single player mode that could be played by yourself. Or in co-op, uh, also had a, the um, Sullust uh, drop zone thing, which you had to capture and defend the pod uh, in Sullust. And of course you had the showpiece, which was the Hoth 40 player walker assault, which was pretty cool. Pretty damn fun, uh, in theory at least, you know, in theory and practice, it uh, doesn't really work out. Uh, basically how Hoth walker assault works is... The Empire have to escort the walkers, the AT-ATs, to the rebel base and destroy the shield generator. And the Empire wins if the walkers aren't destroyed. The rebels have to destroy the walkers uh, and prevent them from reaching the uh, shield. Okay, and what happens is you, the walkers are shielded so you can't just, you know, blow the shit out of them. Uh, what you have to do is you have to capture the uh, orbital station. I'm calling them orbital stations, okay? You capture the orbital stations. It calls in a set of Y-Wing bombers, which weaken the walkers and lower their shields, and then you just go to town and DPS them. Bit like Sword Squadron, really. You know, it's exactly, it's Unit 1 on Sword Squadron, there you go. So if you want a an explanation to how it works from the Rebel perspective, then, you know, it's Unit 1, Sword Squadron, get the bomb... Run the bomb, DPS it, there you go, job done. Now, this mode, uh, we'll start out with Hoth, I guess. Uh, fairly unbalanced in favour of the Empire, needless to say. Uh, I don't think I've ever, I've never seen the Rebels win. You know, ever in a play with the Rebels. Even if you play really, really badly as the Empire, you still kind of win. Because the Walkers have a lot of health, and they need to have the rebels do way more damage to the walkers when the shields are down so then it becomes a strategic more kind of strategic thing and what happens is when the shields go down uh, as a rebel player all your attention gets focused on the walker because you want to win the match and empire you just get free kills free kills because they're all shooting this big walker you can just run up shoot a couple of guys and that's it free kills for you really <laughs> that's it um, so that's where it's, it just really doesn't feel balanced, that mode, yet. Um, but I guess balance is something they can work on. And where did it go right? Uh, the best thing about it is it looks good. I mean, it certainly looks amazing. Graphically, on the PC, at least, at Ultra settings, it looks amazing. The PS4 and Xbox One versions don't look as good. They don't look as good. I'd say they're probably the equivalent of the PC on low settings. I would say, and they're also not running at 1080p as well. The PS4 runs at 900p, and the Xbox One runs at a last-gen 720p, okay? And they do suffer a lot, of, especially in Tatooine, not so much in the multiplayer modes, but in, sing in the uh, sort of single-player mode, if you would call it that. There's no campaign in it, uh, but on Tatooine, there's a lot of pop-in. A lot of texture pop-in, shadow pop-in on the Xbox One version, uh, but... However, they both run at 60 FPS, so that is the important thing here, as they're both running at 60 frames per second. So at least it's smooth. It runs very, very smoothly. There's not a lot of hitching. There's not a lot of um, frame rate issues with the console. The PC version depends what settings you run at. I get 40 to 60 on ultra settings. Uh, if I drop everything to high... Uh, turn the anti-aliasing down to low, then I can maintain 60 FPS regardless of what we're doing, whether it's Hoth, whether it's Sullust. So optimization, good. Very, very good. The beta is pretty well optimized from what I, my impressions of it anyway, at least running on an AMD hardware. Now, I had to run DirectX 11 because Mantle, I don't think was available. I never saw any option for it, uh, at least in beta. I imagine the full version will have Mantle support as every other uh, Frostbite Engine 3 game that's been released had Mantle support. So I would imagine that Mantle will be enabled. Mantle is the uh, AMD specific API that replaces DirectX 11. Uh, allows uh, 
better access to the uh, graphics card's uh, features, at least. Uh, difficult to record, though, with uh, Mantle. That's the only thing. I think I can only use the Raptor desktop app to record it with Mantle. So hopefully we might get 60 FPS Ultra, because it does give you a slight performance bump. So we might get maybe 50 to 60 instead of 40 to 60 frames per second on Ultra. But other than that, I'm quite happy with the way it runs. Yeah, the PC version is fairly good. It's very, very good. We'll do a separate video on which version you should buy, but other than that, yeah, graphically it looks good. It's a good looking game. They nailed the, the art style and the sound. They nailed it. I mean, it's like, I, I went and watched, I went and watched, uh, Empire Strikes Back after, play, I spent the day yesterday playing, uh, Hoth, the Walker Assault on Hoth. It's like, I'm gonna go watch Empire Strikes Back on a su Sunday night. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go watch Empire Strikes Back because this is awesome. And yeah, they have nailed it. The look, the feel of the weapons, the sounds of the weapons. The yeah, they've absolutely dice have nailed it. They've certainly nailed it from a visual perspective and from a audio perspective as well. I wish there was an option as a YouTuber to turn off the music though because you always get flagged for copyright with the uh, the John Williams themes that play. You've got of course the main Star Wars theme that plays and you get all the other themes, the Battle of Endor theme, it keeps getting flagged for copyright every time I do it, every time I do videos with audio in it so it would be nice to have an option, maybe it'll be available in the previous, in the final game to just turn the music off because that's what's getting flagged and then we can just have gameplay footage without being flagged for copyright. It's not the gameplay that's being flagged, it's the soundtrack that's being flagged. So hopefully we can get that. A lot of people have been streaming it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to stream it on PC, unfortunately. It does use eight CPU cores. And of course to stream I need at least two free cores. So eight CPU cores it uses. All eight are active on my AMD eight core CPU, which is good to see that it's taking advantage of the uh, multiple, uh, the extra cores. Uh, the minimum requirement is a quad core, so you should be fine with quad core. As for the requirements, uh, the minimum and recommended are bullshit. To be honest, that's what they are. Um, 5.7 gigs of system RAM at Ultra. Uh, okay, running Tatooine 6, about 6 gigs of system RAM it was using. Uh, at Ultra settings, on Hoth, doing Hoth. So uh, that was the 40 player Hoth. It used about 2.5 gig of VRAM Ultra on Hoth. So again, the recommended requirements are of course 16 gigabytes of system RAM and 4 gigabytes of VRAM again. So I can run it, I mean I have a card that's the card below the recommended card. I have a 280X, it recommends a 290. So uh, I have that card, the card below that, so it's fine. It's fine. We I did a video on that. Should we worry about the optimization? But other than that, I'm running 40 to 60 FPS. I didn't expect to get 60 at ultra, uh, but I do get 60 at high, and it looks great at high. To be honest with you, it's perfectly except it's fine at low. I think it looks good at low. Play it at low settings. I did a few things at low settings. Uh, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. Perfectly playable. Okay, in every way. So. If your PC can run it, I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't worry about the recommended or the uh, minimum. I'd maybe if you're at the minimum, I, I don't know if it can run under the minimum. I've seen people with like four gigs of RAM running it as well. The minimum requirement is eight gigabytes of RAM. Most of the tests, bear in mind my test is total system RAM usage. Total system RAM usage at ultra settings on Hoth, 40 player uh, Walker Assault on Hoth. It was using six and a half gigabytes of system RAM, so there was ten gigabytes free of system RAM. So you don't need sixteen gigs. Uh, if you if you want to run ultra sixty FPS at ten eighty p, you're probably going to want a two ninety or a GTX nine seventy. Okay, if you're on the Nvidia side, so you're probably going to want that. But a high settings. Perfectly fine. It looks great. It looks great at medium, I think, as well. Uh, low settings looks very good as well. So uh, there's not a huge amount of issues with running the game. If you've got less than 8 gigabytes of system RAM and you've got a graphics card with less than 2 gigabytes of VRAM, I think it's time to upgrade, to be honest with you, in 2015. I think those things are fairly standard, but you don't really need 16 gig of RAM 
really, because I never saw the RAM usage go above 7 gigabytes. That was total system RAM. That included the operating system running in the background, so uh, I don't really know what they were thinking with that. I mean, it's going to put people off if you look at the back cover and go, what the fuck? You know, not that people look at the back... Well, look at the... Uh, Origin page, I guess, for it. I guess if you see that. I was going to say Steam page there, but it's not on Steam. It's a EA game, so it's on Origin. Uh, the console port's not as good, but perfectly playable on console. Never noticed any frame rate drops. Uh, the beta was pretty good, actually, in terms of the uh, server performance. Never really noticed any big lag spikes. Never really noticed any any real DCs or anything like that. Never had any problems with disconnects. Was always able to get in. Was always able to play it. Uh, the game never crashed on me once. I played all three platforms. So there you go. It's good. Pretty good. I actually done a pretty good job. Uh, the modes that were there worked fine. Perfectly fine. I never noticed any major bugs or anything like that. I never got stuck in the environment once. Never found a situation where I couldn't spawn. Um, so let's move on. We'll talk about some of the uh, some of the bad points of the game. Uh, one of the the biggest issue I noticed was balance. Okay, we talked about balance. Talked a little bit earlier about balance in terms of the Empire having the advantage on the Hoth Walker assault. In terms of that, I think it was so easy to win as the Empire. Like you didn't have to play well, and you just scored free kills again. Just when the rebels focused their fire on the walkers they're just it's just it's just a turkey shoot basically because they're all firing in one direction you're trying to rock up behind them and just blast them all and <laughs> really it's fairly easy uh to get some cheap kills also the weapon balance isn't great now the rebels start with the rifle which i don't remember what it's called and the empire starts with the e11 blaster rifle which is the standard issue imperial uh rifle that stormtroopers have um, so the E11 rifle does more damage. Now the rifle that the Rebels start with has greater range, which I never really noticed range being an issue in the game to be honest with you, but the Empire are handed a slight advantage if you are starting out. When you, you know, you can unlock all of the rifles. So you've got the pistol which is kind of overpowered and then you've got the, uh, the rapid fire kind of rifle, the sort of light machine gun type gun, which is a bit OP because there's very little weapon recoil in the game. I guess they're trying to go for, I mean, Star Wars, was there any weapon recoil? I don't know, but there's no weapon recoil. So things with high rates of fire and weapons that can fire a lot of rounds without overheating because it's an overheating system yet you don't get ammo you just your weapon overheats and then you've got like a gears of war type system where if you press the button at the right time you can get like the active reload type thing that you can do uh, otherwise your weapon goes on cooldown and you can't fire it for a few seconds until it cools down if you miss the active reload prompt so again you've got those kind of things so if you the more shots you can fire without it going on, or the higher rate of fire you can get. That's why the light machine gun and the pistol tend to be quite overpowered, because you can just fire more shots off without that. So it does give you a slight advantage, because there is no recoil, you can just hold the fire button down, realistically. would like to see a bit of recoil put in. Again, I would like to see the rifle, at least the, the rebel rifle, at least have its accuracy buffed a little bit and have maybe its range buff, but range is never really an issue. I've never really noticed uh, any range issues. I'd also like to see the damage that it does kind of normalized kind of thing, because one, things do more damage than others, which I don't really like, to be honest with you. I'm not a big fan of. The slower firing weapon maybe should do more damage, and maybe the, the weapon with the rapid fire should be less accurate would be the thing i do. Maybe have greater critical hit chance with instead of damage it just has critical hit chance so if you get a headshot it's more likely to register as a headshot i also found the hit detection a little bit off like you'd shoot someone in the torso and it'd say headshot and you'd be like oh <laughs> shot nowhere near his head and got a headshot or you'd shoot them in the head and then they'd kill you and you'd see them shooting at your legs or something like that a uh, simple Call of Duty thing that I hate, where you shoot them in the legs seems to be the thing in Call of Duty. I don't know why. Uh, because there's no real, because you die, you have so little health, I guess. You can just shoot them anywhere. I don't like that type of shooter. I don't like that thing about modern shooters, to be honest with you. 
I'm not a fan of that, but yeah, a few balancing issues, but they've got a month to kind of balance out. Balance issues are easy to fix, realistically. Again, I'd like to see the Rebels do a bit more damage so that you put more emphasis as the Empire on disrupting, because you can disrupt the Y-Wings when they call in the Y-Wings. You can uh, cancel the call if you capture the, uh, the uplink. You can cancel it cancel the Y-Wing getting called in as the Empire. For me, there's just less emphasis on that for the Empire. There should be more put on that, because if you make the Walkers a chance, and bear in mind only one of the Walkers has to make it, and there's two Walkers in that. There's two AT-ATs in that mode as well, so you have to kill two of them. So I think maybe lowering their health a little bit would be a good thing, you know, or increasing the damage that you do to the Rebels would again be a thing. Now they also have the uh, card system, I will do a video on the, the the hand system that you get, it's called the hand of cards that you get. Three choices you've got, I think you unlock more hands as you go on so you can switch out between them. Uh, they're kind of like your classes but I will do a video covering that specifically so don't worry about that, we'll talk a little bit about that. They're kind of interesting things, uh, a couple of things I haven't unlocked yet, you get things like the jetpack, which lets you jet into the air, you get like a, a sniper rifle, which is one of them, you get a long range one shot sniper rifle, you get a grenade, thermal detonator is one of them as well, you, that's just your grenade. Uh, so you they, they basically they don't have charges, they tend to just go on cooldown uh, for a set amount of time, you throw your grenade and then it goes on cooldown, so you've got infinite grenades theoretically, but it's got like a 10 second cooldown or something like that, so you can't just spam grenades at people. Halo 1 style, if you were playing Halo 1 remake with the cheats on, you could spam grenades. Uh, or the infinite ammo skull, should we say, on. You could spam grenades in uh, single player mode. That was fun. Uh, but yeah, I think overall, it's pretty decent. Um, the Tatooine survival's alright. I mean, it's just Gears of War's horde mode, basically. Um, you only get, I think it's 6 waves is all you get. It's 15 waves in the final game. Uh, some of the modes... Uh, we got to take a look at the other modes, you know, you've got planets like Hoth, there's a survival there, there's Endor uh, as well, uh, there's a few other ones, there's the Battle of Jakku, which is the DLC, um, you've got other planets, there's another sort of assault type thing on Endor as well, but I mean, we, we got to see them, but we, well, we got to see the menu placeholder for them, we never really got to actually play them, but other than that, it's pretty good open beta actually, uh, I enjoyed it. Um, is it worth buying? I think it depends on whether you like Battlefield, because one of the, the other things is that it doesn't feel so much Battlefront as Battlefield with a kind of, with a Star Wars theme to it. It's not really a, like a Star Wars skin that's put over it because the weapons behave very differently and certain things behave differently than they do in Battlefield. You also get the hero classes as well. You can play on Hoth, you can play as Darth Vader if you're an Empire player. I uh, didn't get much experience playing as them, or you play as Luke Skywalker, who has the wrong outfit on. He has his Return of the Jedi outfit. He should have his pilot suit on for Hoth. It would be nice if he did have that. So there you go. Anyway, that is my uh, thoughts on Battlefront, Battlefield, Battlefront. Get them mixed up. Same game, really, <laughs> really, realistically. So there you go. Um, I think it, yeah, it's worth buying. I think it's worth checking out. Definitely. Um, if you like Battlefield, then yeah, go for it. If you're a Star Wars fan, it is worth it because they have absolutely nailed it in terms of the look, the feel, and the sounds of Star Wars. They have nailed that very, very well. You know, something Swotor did very well. They nailed the look and feel of Star Wars. So anyway, that is all for this video. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you again soon, and goodbye.